seated. Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful day to come together and worship the Lord. And I greet you and welcome you. By the way, if you're new in our congregation, we have some assists in worship. We have a staff nursery that's down by the main entrance. And uh, anything that you need help with, we've got it. And if you're with us for the first time today, if you would stop at the Welcome Center, we would like to leave you with a special gift. Now, you'll notice that we have a paragraph of people that we care about. It's called our Ministry of Caring. And in addition to what we have printed in the bulletin, we just want to inform ourselves that Nadine Burry is in the local hospital having had knee replacement. Jerry Struby had shoulder surgery this past week. Dell and Betty Cardwell celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary yesterday. And then we've got some sad news. Jen Fultz's sister's nephew, sister's family nephew, was killed in an automobile accident last evening. And so Jen asked us to be conscious of the Butler family and and their particular concerns and needs at this time. You have this insert, it's your announcements, and we hope that you will pay very close attention to these because these are so important. And you'll notice that among other things, we have the Advent events on Wednesday night. Uh, you will certainly be uh, blessed if you come and be a part of that. Just note very carefully everything that's on both sides of that announcement sheet. And then the other insert is special events of outreach toward the TJ and Liz Yurden and uh, their particular needs, and that's Wednesday night and a week from today. So let's keep these things in mind. And now we will begin our worship by the lighting of the Advent candle. Today's reading comes from Luke 21, verses 25 through 28. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your hands, because your redemption is drawing near. Again, this comes from Luke 20, chapter 21. So back in the day, some 2,000 years ago, uh, we all know the story of the wise men and the shepherds uh, that <clears throat> were looking for, for signs that uh, Jesus was coming. And today it's a little different. We don't look for that brilliant star in the sky uh, for angels singing, singing in the heavens. <clears throat> uh, today we look for other signs that Jesus is with, with us. Uh, we look for signs that we are feeding the hungry, healing the sick, clothing the naked, caring for the poor. We look for signs that we're working for justice and righteousness at home and in our world. With that, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And so we watch and wait and stay alert, waiting again for the coming of Jesus, and we light a single candle in preparation for that glorious day. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Y'all stand up for every people around you while we're getting ready. Thank you.
Good morning, everybody. It's so good to be here at God's house. I'd like to start this worship time with a word of prayer. Dear Father God, we come humbly today as the glad receivers of your mercy and your grace. We, we acknowledge that there is absolutely nobody like you, nobody even close, and our deepest desire is to worship you. We want to worship you in spirit and truth as King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you and we praise you for who you are and what you've done. We acknowledge your presence in this place and in us as believers. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
after me. Lord, our Lord. Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth. How majestic. Search me on the
May we bring our spirits into a sense of oneness as we pray. Almighty God, you are the God who made the heavens and the earth, and you are the God who supervises all that you've made. This morning we come accepting your invitation to have audience with you through prayer. Today we come to you, our Father, with a sense of urgency because we live in a time of great uncertainty and insecurity. We hear again the words of your Apostle that our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Sometimes our Lord, like those New Testament apostles, we wonder if we have enough spiritual stamina to continue on as a follower of our Lord. And, but then like those apostles, we have to ask with them, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Sometimes our Heavenly Father, our faith wavers like the worshiper of old, we do not see any signs of God's presence. And with that worshiper of antiquity, we ask, How long will the enemy mock you, O God? Why do you remain inactive? And then we hear again those words of affirming faith that our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. Teach us, O oh Lord, the art of waiting upon God, the art of waiting for the Lord to accomplish his divine purpose through us. We thank you for the celebration of Advent. We thank you for what it represents to us. And now, this Advent season, would you send the Holy Spirit to make more clear to us the fuller meaning of the coming of the Christ? We're so thankful for the gift of life. We cherish it and we want to live it to its fullest. And we struggle. We struggle both in our faith and in our attitude toward God when we are denied the freedom to live life to its fullest. Lord, come to us in our suffering. Help us to be made aware of your presence with us. Help us to seek to know your purpose for us when we go through hard and trying times. In the name of our Lord, the Christ, we come to pray for one another. Most merciful God, bring comfort to those who grieve. And in particular this day, would you remember the Butler family and those who are members of their extended family. We pray for a renewing of faith for those who suffer from sickness and disease. And here we particularly bring to you those in pain, such as Nadine Burry and Jerry Struby and Betty Cardwell and others that you so personally know. We particularly bring to you those whose lives are threatened by disease. And we bring Ashley Lawrence Marcin DeBoer, Pat Laudenbach, Siebert Dammer, Shirley Gage, and Paula Berry, and others that you so personally know. We particularly bring to you those who need direction and the strength to follow the directions that you, are, you have for them. And we pray for Kathy Barnhart, for Teresa, Teresa Grohlund, Jessica Weber, Kathy Trapp, TJ and Liz Yurden, and Andrew Steen, and others that you so personally know. Lord God, remember the men and women who risk danger to keep the peace for us, both here at home and those elsewhere in our world. Be their protector and the protector and comforter of their families. And now may we sense the glory and the meaning of that oneness as we pray together as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite our little ones to come forward at this time. Wow, there's a lot of movement out there. Good morning.
The Old Testament reading today is taken from Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, and I begin to read at verse 14. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill my gracious promise with the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous branch from David's line, who will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is what he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. I want to invite you to join with me as we respond to the Old Testament lesson in prayer. Let us pray responsibly, Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame, but let not my enemies exalt over me. Let none that wait for you be put to shame. Let them be put to shame who are clothed with treachery. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Keep me in your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore the Lord instructs sinners in the way and leads the humble in what is right and teaches them their way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep the Lord's covenant and testimonies. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And now reading from the book of 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. How can we thank God enough for you, given all the joy we have because of you before our God? Night and day we pray more than ever to see all of you in person and to complete whatever you still need for your faith. Now may our God and Father himself guide us on our way back to you. May the Lord cause you to increase and enrich your love for each other and for everyone in the same way as we also love you. And may the love cause in your hearts to be strengthened to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his people. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bird. Our final appointed scripture for this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke. It's the 5th, 21st chapter, beginning of verse 25. Let us listen for the voice and the commands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, there will be dismay among nations in their confusion over the roaring of the sea and surging waves. The planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken, causing people to faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. And then they will see the human one coming on a cloud with power and great splendor. Now when these things begin to happen, stand up straight and raise your heads because your redemption is near. Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all of the trees. When they sprout their leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that God's kingdom is near. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until everything has happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. Take care that your hearts are not dulled by drinking parties or drunkenness and the anxieties of day-to-day -day life. Do not let that day fall upon you unexpectedly like a trap. It will come upon everyone who lives on the face of the whole earth. Stay alert at all times, praying that you are strong enough to escape everything that is about to happen and to stand before the human My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God, to which we respond, thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we give you thanks for this gift of the season of Advent, 
time for us to prepare our hearts and to make room for the Christ child. Lord, be with us this day and all the days of our lives as we seek to make space for our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered here be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. <coughs> Amen. Four a.m. Every year, the strategy was the same. My brothers and I, we would wake up early, and quietly, the three of us would tiptoe to our big sister's room, and we would negotiate who had to go in to wake her up. And every year, negotiations would fail, and so our youngest brother got pushed in. And every year, the response was the same, go back to bed, you three. But we would not be deterred from our mission. The three of us would slink down the stairs as quietly as we could. Three kids, do they move downstairs very quietly, Amy? No, not very quietly. We get to the bottom of the stairs, and we turn the corner, and the gauntlet lay before us. You see, we had to get past the open door of our parents' bedroom. And this is where we would pause and decide, is it worth the risk? To wake the sleeping giants would mean being banished back up to our rooms for at least another two hours. No faith that any kid should have to endure. But if we were successful, the most glorious sight awaited us on the other side. The lit tree with wrapped presents exploding in every direction underneath. Well, the expectation proved to be too much for us, and every year we ran the gauntlet, some years with more success than others, but it was always worth it. The expectation alone might have killed us if we hadn't done it. Expectation. When was the last time that you felt this kind of expectation, this kind of heart yearning for something miraculous to happen? Can you remember how it felt to be a kid? To feel such expectancy of joy of the miracle of Christmas morning? Can you remember that feeling? Well, that sense of expecting a miracle is exactly what this season of Advent is about. Advent comes from a Latin word, Adventus, pretty similar. It means arrival. And so when we know that someone or something is about to arrive, we expect them. When a mother is carrying a child, we say that she is expecting. expecting. That's right. The Christmas miracle we celebrate and anticipate is that Mary was expecting. She was literally expecting a miracle. A 12 or 14 year old girl, unwed, a mother to be bearing the Son of God. This is the time of year in which we celebrate Mary expecting a miracle. Now, Advent is also the time of year that we rehearse our own expectation of a miracle, isn't it? This is the time of year when we practice what it means to wait, because we all love to wait so much, don't we? We practice what it means to wait to wait for the return of Jesus Christ to the earth, just as he promised. And that's the picture that our scripture readings today are painting. Specifically from the gospel passage, we are continue on where we left off just a couple weeks ago. Do you remember when I preached from Mark on Christ the King Sunday? And we had that image of Jesus coming with great power and splendor, perhaps like King Josiah, on a war chariot, kicking up great clouds. Now, both in Luke and Mark's rendition, Jesus goes on to talk about the fig tree. In fact, all trees, Jesus says. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout their leaves, Jesus said, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already here. So also, when these things are taking place, you will know that the kingdom of God is near. For I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Now, too often I think 
we evangelicals in this country associate Jesus' return with doom and gloom, with destruction and devastation, but the Bible tells a little bit different story than that. Jesus talks about the fig tree and the other tree sprouting leaves as a sign of the coming of the kingdom of God. Now, if Jesus were implying that the end of the world was here, that the world would be destroyed, that we would be entering this nuclear winter, then why does he choose to talk about springtime and new life and new birth coming forth? Advent is the time of year that we remember that God birthed a miracle through the servant Mary. Advent is the time of year when we expect that God will birth new life and peace with the coming of Jesus Christ. But Advent is also the time of year when we remember that God invites us to participate in his kingdom plans. On Wednesday night, we're doing this book study, Christmas is Not Your Birthday, by the Reverend Mike Slaughter. And in that book, he defines what a miracle is. He says, every work of God is conceived in the heart of a disciple. It grows in conviction and clarity of vision, and then is delivered through God's intended action. More simply stated, he says, God births miracles through ordinary people. God births miracles through ordinary people. Say that with me. God births miracles through ordinary people. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God wants to use us, Jesus' as followers, to bring about miracles that define the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven as we pray in the Lord's Prayer? Do you believe it? I've had some friends throughout the years who believe this with all their heart, soul, and mind. As I mentioned in our Wednesday evening class, my friend Kermit believed God could use the people of Bismarck Legacy United Methodist Church to bring about a miracle. And so in the past three years, as they've been saving up $3 million to build a new building there in Bismarck, they put $3 million in the bank. Simultaneously, they gave $100,000 away in their community to a mission called the Ruth Meyer House. Kermit asked his parishioners to, to set a budget. How much money are you going to send, spend on Christmas this year? Now, consider doing a half Christmas. Only spend half that much on your family and your friends and that other half. Give it away. Give it away for the purposes of God's kingdom. You know, the first time the Ruth Meyer House received a $25,000 check, do you think they thought that was a miracle? That a church just came and gave them a check for $25,000. And the next year, $34,000. In the next year, 35000 But Kermit's not alone. My friend Brooke saw the great need for a feeding ministry in Mitchell, South Dakota over 10 years ago. The number of people at Mitchell that, who, that couldn't afford three nutritious meals a day had grown over the years. The number of single elderly people who ate alone day after day also continued to grow, just like here in Millbank. Brooke knew that God expects faithfulness from God's followers. Brooke also expected that God could perform a miracle through the people of First United Methodist Church. And from this expectation, the love feast was born. And every other week, meal that is served free of charge to the community in the basement of First United Methodist Church. And very soon, it wasn't just First United Methodist Church people cooking and serving, but other groups were signing up, community clubs, local banks and businesses. And before you knew it, even other churches in town were asking, can we come to your church building and cook and serve this community meal for people who are hungry and lonely and in need of deep community? Does that sound like something Jesus would ask us to do? I also remember my friend Kim Coversmith almost 15 years ago now. She was tired of the hyper-consumerism that has come to define Christmas, this overspending that we can't stop ourselves from. And Kim had a passion for fair trade coffee and tea, just like the youth are selling in the back. 
where farmers in developing nations are paying a living wage so they can actually feed their families, so they can actually afford to send their kids to school, so they don't lose their farming operation. Kim cared about workers in Asia and Central America who worked for slave wages to produce many of the things that we buy each other for Christmas. Kim cared about Heifer International and 10,000 Villages, people whose mission is to help empower other folks towards sustainability and health. She cared that kids in Asia didn't have access to Bibles. And so Kim expected that God would use the people of the United Methodist Church of Chugiak in Alaska to bring about a Christmas miracle. And just again this year, they hosted their annual alternative Christmas market and gift fair, where they raised over $10,000 for people all across the globe. God's people. The people that God so loves that he came into this world and became that tiny infant child. My friends, God wants to use you to bring about a Christmas miracle this year. God wants to use us, Central United Methodist Church, to bring about a Christmas miracle this year. But in order for God to use us, we have to expect that God can and will use ordinary people like you and I. As Christians, we are called to have that kind of excitement. Like little kids on Christmas morning, we must expect a miracle. Because as disciples of Jesus Christ, God expects it of us. So, what will you do differently this year? How will you and your family celebrate Christmas differently this year? How is God calling you to be an agent of God's miracle? How is God nudging you to not only expect a miracle, but to be a catalyst in helping us as a church bear God's miracle to the community of Milbank? As we remember Mary expecting a miracle, as we practice expecting the miracle of Christ's return, let us be open to the Spirit's leading in God how wants to use us today in bearing miracles for our community, for our conference, and for our world. My friends, expect a miracle. And all God's people said, Amen, amen. and Amen. Gracious and Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you would inspire in us this sense of expectation, that we would call forth from our very depths those passions that you have ignited in our souls, so that we might be a blessing to those in our community and in our world. We ask it in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite the members of our praise team to come forward at this time as we sing together and as we offer ourselves up in praise and thanksgiving. Will the ushers come forward and please receive our morning tithes and offerings.
we are in this time of holy communion, I want to encourage you to hear the great thanksgiving in a new way, to let this language reshape the way that you see God's creation as we recount God's mighty acts of salvation in this three-minute prayer. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our own heart. We have failed to be obedient to church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, hear the good news as Paul write, wrote to the church in Rome. Christ has died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. My friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, and you made covenant to be our sovereign God, and you spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of our mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. Lord, you scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts, and you have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones, and you exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things, and the rich you send away empty. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. And you delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, and he gave thanks. And he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to each of his disciples gathered around the table, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. It was the fourth cup that evening, the cup of salvation. And he gave thanks. And he blessed it. And then he gave it to each of his friends gathered around the table, and he said, take, drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, I want to remind us that in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate what is called an open communion table. That means you don't need to be a member of this church. You don't need to be a member of any United Methodist Church. All that is required to receive is that you wish to be in right relationship with God the Father, through God the Son, empowered by God the Holy Spirit. All are welcome. This is not our table, it is Christ's table. We're going to be serving by the practice of intention. That is, the ushers will dismiss you to come forward, and there will be servers on both sides. The first will tear off a piece of bread and hand it to you. And you can dip that in the cup of the second person's. Be careful not to dip your fingers down into the juice. Just the corner of the bread is enough. And then you're welcome to kneel at the railing if you so choose, or you can return to your seat by the side aisle. If you have need for gluten or dairy-free bread, I want to invite you to come down this side aisle here, and just make mention of that to the communion stewards here. And the person who's holding the cup will just turn around and grab the plate and allow you to take a piece of gluten and dairy-free bread and also a smaller cup that hasn't been touched by all the gluten bread. I want to invite our praise team and our communion stewards to come forward. And as they are, one more reminder that Pastor DeVern will be just off to the side with anointing oil for anyone who is in need of prayers, of healing, or otherwise. Please, after receiving Feel free to stop, and Pastor DeVern will be honored and blessed to pray. Will you please come? Because we are one body, there is one loaf of bread. And like Christ, we are meant to be broken and given for the sake of the world. Because there is one Jesus, one Messiah, one Savior, there is one cup from which we all share. One cup of blessing through Christ our Lord.
thanks for this gift of your holy mystery. Lord, may we receive grace through this gift of grain and grape. May it strengthen us to go out into the world to love others as you have called us to love. We ask it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, I want to invite you to stand and join with us as we sing our song of sending to them. <laughs> Christ's name, go in peace.